My fellow Nerdikins, welcome back to another episode of The Jank Tank. Today we've got another deck profile for you, and it's going to be the one from our winning, uh, winning deck from the last video, and it is going to be Soul Unleashed Son Goku. This is a very old, very, very old leader, um, set two, as a matter of fact. Uh, probably mostly forgotten, but... It's a red sand leader, and I like its activate battle on its front, uh, on its awakened side. But uh, on the front side, it's got an activate battle uh, that you pitch a card from your hand, and it gets plus five k for the battle. That's a once per turn. It can awaken at four life by drawing two cards. And then on this side, uh, the activate battle actually uh, is essentially a bean because you pitch one and it gets plus five k for the turn instead of just the battle which is what I like about this leader. And then uh, on this side, you get to draw on swing, whereas this side, you get no draw on swing. Which, I mean, is pretty common with the older leaders in the game. But uh, <laughs> let's get right into the rest of the deck. So the unison that we are running, well, we're actually running two different unisons, but we're running four copies of Mass Saiyan uh, Avenger for, from Another Dimension. Because the engine that we are playing behind this leader is the Bardox crew. So you already knew that if you uh, watched the gameplay video. But it's got a plus one that you get to search through your deck, add a one drop, up to one one drop from your deck to your drop area, then shuffle your deck and draw a card. Or you can minus two to draw a card and give all of your Red Saiyans plus 5k for the turn. Yeah, plus 5k for the turn. So if you're able to swarm the board really well, that uh, that's really nice. But most of the time, uh, the only thing you're really using that leader for is the draw power. And then the other unison that we're playing is the one copy that we're allowed, uh, Piccolo Jr., Descendant of the King. Um, mainly just because you want as many chances to get a unison as early as possible, especially if you're playing against an opponent that wants to play a stallier game. Because, uh, like I said, this leader doesn't draw on the unawakened side, so... If your opponent's trying to stall you out, it could be really troublesome uh, not getting draws if you don't see a unison. But speaking of uh, your opponent trying to stall you out, we're playing four of the Bardock Pride of a Low Class Warrior because he, he is the self-awakener of the engine. Uh, you get to, when you swing with him, you can take a life. He'll get an 11k boost. And if he deals damage, since your leader is a Red Saiyan, you get to search the top seven cards of your deck for a one cost Bardock screw is it just any Bardock or yeah it's a one cost Bardock screw right yeah a one cost Bardock screw <coughs> excuse me I'm still getting over the cold so I apologize for that apologize for sounding kind of disgusting but uh yeah you get to search the top seven of your deck play out a one drop Bardock screw and then neither him nor the one drop that uh, you played because he does get to restand um, can attack for the turn uh, for the rest of that turn. Um, but that's not a huge deal because most of the time when you're doing that, you're actually going to be uh, EX evolving into the 5 drop on top of him anyway. And uh, we'll go over what that card does when we get there for anybody that doesn't already know. Um, but let's get into some of the 1 drops that we play. 4 copies of Chain Attack Fascia because it is a top 5 searcher for a Bardox, any of the Bardox crew in the deck or a 2 drop unison. So uh, just ways to help filter and get some more of your drop power onto the board. Then 4 copies of... Chain attack four. Oh, she also has bond. So uh, bond three. So if you have three red Saiyans or three ba red Bardock's crew on the field, uh, she gets an 11k boost. So uh, that's the same with all these uh, one drops, except for the Pride of a Low Class Warrior. <coughs> but we're also running four copies of the Chain Attack Borgos. It is uh, just like the Fasha, except this one draws instead of searches the top five. And then we'll get into our pressure one drops. We're running two copies of Chain Attack Shugesh because it is a double striker with Unique, which is why we're only running two copies. Because uh, the recursion in this deck is actually really nice. Um, obviously, it's a little better uh, run behind the leader that this deck is meant to run behind. Uh, check out that uh, that video on the channel. Uh, I will be featuring that deck again later, but that's neither here nor there. Let's continue with this one. Uh, we're, and then the last of our one drops that we're running is actually one of the power cards of the deck, and it's Chain Attack Bardock. Uh, just like the rest of these guys, he's got Bond 3, but he's also got Critical, and when he swings, uh, you get to minus 
one of your opponent's battle cards by 4,000 for every Saiyan that you have on the field. So if you have a nice wide board, then you can just wipe the field of something that they have. All right, so that uh, rounds out the one drops. Let's get right into the two drops. Um, we're running two copies of Sun Gohan Saiyan Combo. What he does when he's played, you get to search the top, I think he's a top seven searcher as well, right? Yeah, uh, you get to search the top seven and play out a one drop Saiyan. So you usually have plenty of targets for that. Next uh, two drop that we're playing is our super combo. That's Raditz Saiyan Youth. Pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory since this leader can't awaken outside of 4 life anyway, so you're always going to want Raditz. And then we're playing two copies of Super Saiyan Blue Sun, uh, Kaioken Sun Goku oh, <sighs> Concentrated Destruction. Always such a mouthful to say. Um, for nice barrier removal or uh, wide board removal, if they've got a little, a bunch of little like low swingers. Well, I guess not necessarily low, because uh, it does hit 20k's or less, so like low-ish, I should say. Running two copies of Topo, because he is the floodgate for the deck. Because uh, you do want to try and uh, try and just ride out your turn as, as much as possible, and then just go at face for uh, at your opponent. We're running two copies of Super Saiyan Vegeta Exploiting Weakness because it's just a good counterplay for for red if you are willing to save the energy to play it because uh, you get he reduces if your leader's a red saiyan he reduces his cost by two so he's a three cost counterplay that minuses the uh, your opponent's entire board by 20k. It doesn't ignore barrier but it still uh, minuses anything that doesn't have barrier by 20k so that can be really beneficial. So if you do that and then pair it with that like you have enough energy to do such a thing uh it like they, they can just say goodbye to their board now let's get into the five drop that i was speaking of earlier it's super saiyan bardock uh super saiyan enlightenment and uh he ex evolves for one and when you ex evolve into him you look at the top seven cards of your deck and then place one one drop into your drop area and then when he swings on attack, you get to play a 1-drop from your drop area, and then pick two red sands on your field, and they get plus 5k for the turn. So that's really nice when you have Bardock and Shugesh on the board, because you can give them both the 5k bu uh, buffs. And then if you have just like a nice wide board, if your opponent hasn't really been able to uh, control your board all that well, then uh, that's actually going to be a lot of pressure coming at them. And then the SCR that we're playing, it should be pretty obvious, since it is a red deck. We're playing... Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, Unbridled Power, because it's just amazing. Uh, four energy to play it out. And then it is a double strike, or, uh, excuse me, triple striker. Uh, it does gain dual attack if you have Sparking 25, but outside of the uh, archetype that that SCR was meant for, you're not really ever going to have that. But after you swing for the 40k triple strike, um, if you're not playing against yellow or anything that can negate skills, then when, uh, you remove him from the game for his activate main and you get to wipe your opponent's board and burn them for a life. Just really, really good. So let's get into our extra cards. And the first one should be pretty obvious considering how we're playing a slew of red sands, um, that we're playing four copies of Strats of U7 to give our cards barrier when we, have, uh, the, when we see the best opportunity to do so. And then since red doesn't have any like good counter counter, there is the uh, one counter counter that uh, essentially can counter like dormant and after image technique and like all the other sparkings that uh, it only negates a one cost counter attack that didn't get paid for. Like super st stipulation is just stupid. But uh, so since red doesn't have a counter counter, we're playing two copies of Beer's Ball to help us with floodgates since. Uh, when we're going in for the kill turn, we really don't want them to be able to stop us. And then to help us get to that kill turn and to where we're comfortable is Unending Awakening. It is another way to be in the leader since it is a red Saiyan, so you pay one, counters the attack, and your leader gets plus 5k. So that's just all in all really good, especially on top of the leader's activate battle where if you just have a dead card in hand, you could just pitch it and be your leader on top of that. So essentially you could double be your leader. Uh, super easily too. And then uh, three copies of King of Jesus Imposing Presence just to help slow down your opponent's turn. And then two copies of Testing the Opposition because even though Secret ID is back, it's still nice to have those uh, blocker negates because they're not always going to have access to those cards. And now we'll get into the Z deck. We are playing one copy of Surrounding the Impossible just to kind of help us 
get to the Awakening if we're not seeing our self awaken or if our opponent isn't pressuring us. And then we're running two copies of Defender of Life, just because it's a good Red Z battle card and you don't build a whole lot of Z energy, so it's a lot more relevant than this Rush Attack Vegeta is, which we also do run two copies of. Um, but like I said, we, you don't really build Z energy like super easily with this deck. So uh, Rush Attack Vegeta is essentially just like a 15k body. You don't really get to proc his other ability. Um, and then just to round out our Z deck, we're playing two copies of uh, Ultra Instinct Son Goku Unthinking Onslaught just because he is a 20k dual attacker. And if you have the, because all the battle parts and everything are so cheap, uh, if you have the energy and the Z energy to play them out, sometimes that extra two 20k swings is just enough to get you right over the top of that hill. But that is the deck profile for this, uh, for this deck that was in the series that I think I'm going to be calling Beat Street because it's going to be all rogue level decks or below, at least in my opinion. Um, just for like a nice change of pace to the channel. All right, so if you like what you saw, go ahead and smash that like button, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for more content. And stay nerdy.